An explosive report is exposing an established culture of sexual and verbal harassment within the front office of Washington's NFL franchise. The Washington Post spoke with more than a dozen women who accused team executives of inappropriate behavior. In many instances, those actions were tolerated. All of it comes as the team prepares to retire its nickname, which uses a slur against Native Americans. Nicole Killian reports from the team's facilities in Landover, Maryland. It really took most people no time to comment on my appearance. Emily Applegate is one of 15 women who spoke to the Washington Post, describing a culture of sexual harassment and verbal abuse by former members of the Washington NFL team's front office. I was so embarrassed that I was being treated that way in front of people. You know, like if you get called stupid so many times in front of somebody, like that's really embarrassing. Five ex-employees, including some who were part of owner Dan Snyder's inner circle, are accused of inappropriate language and unwanted sexual advances. In one instance, according to the Post, a female staffer allegedly received a text message from Richard Mann, the former assistant head of pro personnel, asking if her breasts were real or fake. He allegedly told the same employee, I want to squeeze your butt. Sexual harassment has just been commonplace in that in that office for upwards of 10 or 15 years. Reporter Will Hobson broke the story. They are subjected to unwanted overtures, uh, inappropriate remarks about you know certain body parts, uh, and then also that on the sales staff, women have been encouraged to dress low-cut blouses, tight skirts, and, and heels. Welcome back to Redskins Nation. Here One of the officials named veteran play-by-play -play announcer Larry Michael retired this week. He was actually caught on a hot mic speaking in a sexual manner about a college-aged intern. Another personnel executive facing allegations, Alex Santos, was dismissed. Six former employees and two reporters allege he commented on their bodies and asked if they were romantically interested in him. In a statement to the Post, the team said it takes issues of employee conduct seriously. It has also retained a prominent D.C. law firm to conduct a thorough independent review and help the team set new employee standards for the future. What does this mean for Dan Snyder and his organization? This football team is at a crossroads right now. There certainly are a lot of women who are skeptical that the culture can truly change as long as he don't. Welcome, Sam. Great to have you with us. So you're around the franchise regularly. How pervasive would you say this culture of harassment is within the team? Yeah, I think this was prevalent for, for a really long time. I think uh, not only when you hear uh, Will talk about, you know, the evidence and the instances uh, that were detailed in our reporting, but also when you think about, uh, you know, the, the HR department, the infrastructure um, that was around to handle these uh, incidences. You know, right now the, the team has 220 employees across its business and, and in football side, and there is one HR staffer to process those claims. And they also have uh, their part of their job is also administrative ability. So it, it's just very difficult, um, you know, to, to process claims of that nature. And, and I think that's why you're seeing uh, the culture uh, be so pervasive. So let's speak for a bit specifically about Daniel Snyder, because while the report does not accuse him of sexual harassment, there is an instance of verbal abuse against a male employee. What more do we know about what role he played, if any, in these allegations? Our reporting paints Daniel Snyder as a bully. Uh, the, the executive you mentioned, the former uh, president of business operations, um, he was a male cheerleader in college. And Dan Snyder uh, apparently regularly belittled him for that and asked him to do cartwheels uh, after a meeting you know, uh, to, uh, to humiliate him. So when that is the leader of your organization, when that's the executive setting the tone at the top, you start to see how, uh, especially the verbal abuse aspect, kind of trickles down uh, from the same employees that are fielding it from their boss. So uh, his role in this appears to be an enabler or tone setter. And so then how are Schneider and the NFL responding to these allegations? Uh, Dan Snyder issued a statement today essentially uh, saying that this was unacceptable and that it, is, it has strengthened his resolve uh, you know, to fortify the culture and, and turn a new leaf for his franchise. Uh, the NFL condemned it strongly and said this is, you know, there's no place in our league uh, for conduct of this type. Uh, they haven't taken substantiative action yet. Um, it's unclear what they might do, but it seems as though a fine might be uh, you know, their, their ultimate recourse uh, in this situation. Mm -hmm. 
Sam, we have seen team owners pushed out for instances of abuse in the past. The NBA forced Donald Sterling to sell the Clippers after he was caught on tape making racist remarks. The Carolina Panthers owner, Jerry Richardson, sold the team amid accusations of sexual harassment and usage of anti-black slurs. But we've also seen owners survive these systemic issues, such as when the Dallas Mavericks' Mark Cuban was accused of fostering a culture of harassment there. He, of course, still owns the team. So, Sam, it's hard to read the tea leaves, but what kind of pressure is Snyder under now? And is it possible the league will force him out? It does not appear at this time that there would be, uh, you know, that Dan Snyder would sell the team or that he would be forced out. I think, uh, you know, in the case of Jerry Richardson in Carolina, he was directly implicated uh, in the harassment. Uh, and like you pointed out, uh, Mark Cuban was, was not, and Dan Snyder here is not. Uh, and so I don't know that this has risen to the level of what the ownership group would call conduct detrimental to the league. So at this time, it appears he won't sell. But at the same time, uh, two weeks ago, the Washington NFL franchise had its name that it had for 80 years. And, and we see how quickly that situation has progressed. So uh, who knows? Right. All right. Well, Sam Fortier, thank you so much for joining us. We really appreciate it. Thank you for having me.